you, David. That was awesome. I loved it. I want to invite <laughs> I want to invite all our other readers to come on as well. Um, so we can have a short Q and A. Hello. <laughs> there you all are. Thank you all so much for sharing. That was awesome. I loved it. Um, and if you all have like questions for each other as well, I would love to have those answered. Um, I have one question so far. Oh, we can start with that one. Um, any advice for others seeking to write about personal or otherwise heavy subjects? How do you take care along the way? I have some practical advice if I could start. Yeah, of course. A life is a big thing to write. Uh, take it in pieces. Find a certain moments where everything crystallizes, or maybe you don't, maybe it's not everything, where some things crystallize. And don't worry about your big book. Just worry about writing a really good page or chapter and take it piece by piece. That's not the whole question, I know, but that's part of it. Yeah, I'll echo what David said. It's, it's I found I found it was taking taking one little vignette. Um, a lot of times it would just be something that struck me in the night and I would just either record it in a voice memo or write it in notes and it'd just be a sentence and then I'd expand on that and um, try to just dive into that one moment that I was feeling. And then, you know, suddenly it's like the book finds itself. But um, I mean, it was, I think my my notes for this book had would like 25,000 words or something. <laughs> it was like just a note section in my phone. It was just a whole series of yeah. whole series of uh, vignettes and then trying to find the through line is a challenge. But the other part of that question is, you know, find a way, you know, we all deal with in spite of what social media tells us and how everything just seems so glossy and perfect. It's like life is life can be hard. And um, when you're diving into those experiences, find something that, you know, how you what you learned in that experience, but also you know, find, find something that brings you out of that too. Like, what's the hope in that? Like, if, if, if something is really challenging, like what, what is it that brought you out? What is it that you could offer to others and how is that relatable to everyone else? And, and, and how could that, how could that resonate with someone who might not ha have an experience like you? And I found that that was what kept me anchored because oftentimes writing about yourself is really challenging. That's great. It's it's great to hear some. Um, I, I don't write very much about myself personally. <laughs> I spend most of my time writing about other people. Um, so it's great to hear those tips because I would like to do more personal writing in the future. But, um, you know, I do write about a lot of re really heavy things. Um, I wrote a lot about uh, trauma in my book um, and wrote a lot of really intense um, violent scenes um, from moments in people's lives. Um, and uh, I realized that um, in telling like the whole story of a person's life, right? That it, even though those traumatic moments might have had, you know, a really profound impact on that person's trajectory, um, there, that doesn't mean that um, that we don't all experience joy and humor. <laughs> um, and Lissa, you know, who is the protagonist in my book, who's you know experienced incredible violence in her life, and in some cases has been the perpetrator of that violence too, um, is actually the, like the funniest person I know. Um, and uh, we spent so much time laughing together, and I really wanted to capture her humor in the book. Um, and so. Uh, yeah, so I, I, tr I really tried to sort of write in those moments um, when I saw her um, just laughing with her family, so. Did Melissa or Ruby wanna 
chime in. Um, sure, I could chime in. Um, the, um, I guess my process of writing was the, I often was writing through some difficult experiences. So while the book is a memoir and essays and some of it is based in, in um, sort of the memory, um, a lot of the times I was writing through difficult experiences while they were happening, which um, was an interesting process. And in uh, the process of sort of revision, um, the book um, took about a year or two of revision. It took about five or six years to write totally. But in revision, I was able to step away from some of the very deeply um, uh, personal experiences and kind of uh, see the work from an artistic point of view, um, which is helpful. Um, and my, my particular book is a sort of a fragmented nonlinear um, memoir. And so it, it was kind of written in the way that our um, sort of memory works is sort of fragmented and um, these little pieces of experience that um, are very poignant in our lives. Um, and I would just kind of write around those experiences as a way to find the universality, um, the points of connection, um, because the sort of the nonfiction work that I love to read is the, the, the work that goes to the really hard places. Um, Cause I think that's what holds the most um, sort of emotional resonance, I guess. Ruby, did you want to say anything? I don't want to cut you off. <laughs> no worries. Um, we have another question. How has the pandemic event that we've all lived through impacted your life as a writer, either through content or practice? I'll hop on that one. <laughs> um, in... In truth, what was what was interesting, and the reason I want to hop on this is, is just because um, Ground Truth is an environmental book, and um, there's a lot of warnings in it, um, coming from an environmental science standpoint and coming from a climate standpoint. And one of um, the things that kind of unfolded through the pandemic was um, first this deep reliance on the very places that I had written about. You know, like all of a sudden we had this like massive interest to go out into these spaces and um, there, there was an engagement from people um, around outdoor places that was really visceral. Um, but then there was also the fires that happened. We heard, it was like it was like environmental crisis over environmental crisis, the pandemic and then the fires. And there were chapters of the book going up in flames. And it had just come out and, <laughs> and people were in this kind of crisis point and I'm sort of, you know, writing a gloom and doom story. And what we ended up talking about was hope though. And in, and immediately like within moments of the pandemic unfolding and in moments of um, the book coming out, it went from a cautionary tale to a discussion of hope and resilience and um, adaptation and um, how do we abide and, um, you know, repositioning mindset. And so for me, um, it was encouraging and it changed my um, framework of looking at my own writing in terms of, okay, so now we have a, a new place that we're going to because we're coming from a new perspective that we've never been in. So it was, it was profound for my work as an environmental writer, yeah. <laughs> I would say that um, my book came out um, and I was able to do some events before the pandemic, um, but I was supposed to do sort of the last events right when it happened. Um, and so the last year the I would say my writing has really taken, um, I, my writing process has been really impacted by the pandemic and it's sort of been a little bit on hold. I'm finding that my way again um, this past winter, um, but I've, I've found it difficult to stay creative um, last year. Um, and um, I'm now just kind of finding that again. Um, and I don't know if others um, had that same experience. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, so my book came out 
um, like three, two weeks before lockdown. And so I had, uh, <laughs> I had three book events on my book tour and then canceled the rest. Um, so I, uh, I had actually, yeah, I expected to spend a lot of the year um, kind of like emerging out of this hole I'd been living in <laughs> for five years. Um, and I was very excited to emerge and to kind of you know, finally celebrate with Lissa, with her family, with, um, you know, friends in various cities. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I, I didn't. Um, and it was, uh, I don't know, it was interesting. I think like, as everyone was sort of heading into hibernation, right, I was like, wanting to wanting to come out of it but um I was very lucky in that you know my full-time work is as a journalist um I was lucky in that I had um several assignments I'd been traveling the two months leading up to my book launch um reporting stories and so I was just very lucky that I had a body of material to work with and and work that kept on going um you know so I, I kept writing out of necessity and then I to be totally honest like hit kind of just hit a wall in the late summer and just took a break it took like two months without writing at all and it felt really good um so yeah and now I'm back to it <laughs> yeah I, I can echo that as well I my book came out in mid-January and so I was able to do a few a few legs of the tour and then I was coming home for a pause and um and then didn't leave for a year so <laughs> um it was it was interesting because I you know like like Sierra I I felt the same way it was I was so looking forward to finally being social again and and you know coming out of a four-year introspective period where I said no to um many social events and then the pandemic was like go back in your hole and be introspective mm -hmm. even more and so I found even in my photography and my filmmaking I was I hit a creative rut so it was like all across the board I just couldn't I found it was really hard to um find that creative spark when so much was uncertain and so I felt an immense relief at the beginning of this year of just with you know a lot of the shift in things and you know being vaccinated and things it just finally feels like everything is opening up and the creative flow is happening. So it's it's been a, a, an immense relief, even though we still have a long way to go. So. My book was finished, uh, well, it was published in November of 2019. So I just nipped the beginning, I think, of the, of the eligibility period. So I had a chance to have a book launch. We did a spectacular book launch at the old church in Portland. I had an organist come and play some Bach for us uh, and <laughs> it with my readings. <laughs> it was an experiment in spoken word plus pipe organ. You wouldn't think it would work, but boy, did we have fun. So I was, I was on the lucky end for that. Uh, and of course, the manuscript had been finished six, eight months at least before that. So I had made already what is for me a normal transition from prose back to poetry. I tend to, to alternate them. And uh, the experience of writing poetry is so, so far different from producing a, a prose book like this that it, it's, it's stimulating to my mind to do that. And of course it, it works perfectly well in isolation. <laughs> and so it didn't have, the pandemic had zero effect on my writing life. Um, I think I discovered that I'm way, way more introverted than, uh, on the introvert end of the spectrum than I realized. I knew I was a little strange, but <laughs> what do I want to do anyway? I want to get up, read something, write something, take a walk, come back, read something, and write something. And, and so, <laughs> yes, I miss my friends. I miss live music but my writing life was just chugging along like usual. So chalk me up for strange. <laughs> <laughs> and we have one more question. Once your work is published, how does it being out in the world feed you if it does? Uh, 
Um, I, I love, I mean, it's an absolutely amazing when I hear from a reader who has somehow been moved by um, something I've written or from the book, um, when someone writes to me or posts on social media, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's everything. It does feed me and it feeds my creative energy and it excites me to keep writing and, um, and uh, establishing my practice when, um, when it does connect with readers. So absolutely, it does feed my energy. Yeah, I'll just echo that. I think, yeah, hearing from readers really is the most um, gratifying <laughs> part of this process for, for me. Um, and it also uh, having Lissa hear from readers. So she and I, one of the assignments I had um, during, in the beginning of the pandemic, I was um, working on a episode for This American Life, um, which features Lissa's search for her own niece. Um, and it's a missing and murdered indigenous women's story. Um, and uh, when that came out, she just got floods and floods of letters from people in prison, from um, people all over the country who'd, who'd heard that story. And um, so, you know, as a writer who's kind of interpreting and, and presenting to the world another person's story, it's, it's nerve wracking. Like you want to get that right. You want those sort of commonalities between her experience and other people's experiences to feel authentic and real um, so that they actually resonate. Um, and uh, I think seeing how much response she personally has gotten, particularly from readers um, in Native communities has been um, really, really gratifying. Yeah, I'll echo that as well. I, I think um, the, the most satisfying thing of, of, of writing, a, especially a really personal story is finding, finding hearing the, um, hearing stories from others that relate to the parts of the story that I didn't expect anyone to relate to, you know, the, the details of you know, growing up a really shy kid and, you know, feeling, being, not understanding what it's like to be really sensitive and, you know, things that, that were just little details that I didn't, I, I found echoed, you know, across with, with all genders and every, everyone. It was, it was interesting to, you know, cause it was a deeply personal story, but I found those, you know, hearing hearing what how people could relate very very satisfying. That was probably has been the most important thing um, I think for me, just because you know, spending four years in isolation, wondering if anybody is wanting to would ever want to read read anything about you know your own story is really satisfying to hear what how others can relate and how it's helped them. And um, the one thing about the pandemic is I was wondering, you know, with all the other everything else that was happening in the news and in the world, the fires and, you know, elections and, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and everything. It was, it was, I was wondering if it would, my book even, my story even would matter to anyone. And it's, it's interesting how, you know, you know, it's obviously with writing, it's, you know, and publishing, it's, you know, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And so people will find your words when, when they're ready for them. And it's really, it's great to feel that when it happens. So. I think it's important to remember that most of the effect of your writing, you will never hear about. Um, I think the life of, the creative life is always a life of faith. I guess I can't get the religious lingo out of my mouth somehow. But I think sincerely, you put your words out on the theory that there is a reader somewhere. You will never meet this person, but you have the confidence that if you truthfully tell what little bit of the human adventure you have your grasp on, it will resonate with, whether, with others. And I know for sure more than 90%, 99% of the time you will never hear about it. And if you're not satisfied with that, then go into advertising or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to cut anyone off. Are we, anyone want to chime in? Well, I just want to thank you all so much for today. There's like, 
so much magic in hearing like a writer just read their own work. And I really, really appreciate you all doing that for us. Everyone in the audience, thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you can join us on May 2nd um, on OPB at 7 p.m. for the Oregon Book Award Ceremony. And that's all we got. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. <laughs> to meet all of you. <laughs>